Hi there, welcome back. Today we'll discuss a new type of material handling equipment, and that's the belt conveyor. A belt conveyor is an endless belt operating between two pulleys. Okay. Um, let's say this is our pulley more specifically that's our tail pulley and then this one would be our head pulley and then there's a belt here and this belt that's rotating when we say head pulley it refers to the pulley at the discharge end Then this one would be our inlet or uh, feed end. Okay, so the material will be and because this one is this belt is rotating, of course, the material will be exported. From this point. So, um, during its transport, the material is at rest as compared to the motion of the material in the screw conveyor. So, once the material reaches this, this belt, it is in, in a stationary state, meaning it's not moving. So, it, it's just sitting on the belt and it is transported. Compared to the screw conveyors, where the material is actually mixing, so this one can get the adoption for primal materials, materials that are easily broken down. Okay, and another uh, another thing is that. Belt conveyors can also be oriented in a inclined in an inclined position. Okay, so this is horizontal, this is inclined. And it can also be possible it, um, if it starts with a horizontal and then inclined and then back again to horizontal okay so that's the flexibility of a screw ah that's the flexibility of a belt conveyor horizontal uh, incline all right now let's talk about the parts and assemblies now for the parts as i've said this is the pulley This is the, uh, the pulley, and the pulley can be either drum type, spiral type, or wheel type, and still many other configurations. Okay, so when you say drum, it's just basically a drum, a steel drum with, with a shaft and then this, this shaft is connected to the bearings for a spiral type it will be something like this so it's not a solid it's not a solid drum and for a wing pipe So 
it's, it's something like this, but if I draw it the side view, it will do something like this. So, in this case, if there are materials that go underneath the belt, underneath this, and if you have a, a solid tree, that that would be we can can damage the, um, the belt underneath and also the drum surface. Okay, so that's why we have these uh, many types of of pulleys. For the belt, we have many materials. that in upper handouts that just depends upon um, what material you are going to to convey if it is corrosive or if it is abrasive and things like that okay what else now recall that in, in this figure that we have this uh, center distance or span between the the pulleys and so if we have a load here it's like a flexural load on the belt and this belt offers little resistance to flexure so because of that it is provided with idlers okay so idlers it can be flat idler or it can be a trapped idler okay, so basically it's just a roller with bearings inside and then you have um, also shaft so we have a flat idler or we can also have trapped idlers trapped idlers uh, comprises of or consists of three rollers okay, so this is roller one or two or three and this one is referred to as the wing roller this one is I think the center center roll and the angle is what we call the trap angle okay so I'm basically trying to So, if we are referring to uh, idlers where the where the material is resting, that's uh, referred to as carrying idlers. Carrying idlers. And then at the bottom, here, there's also idlers. And that's what we call return idlers. And for trough idlers or for trough belts, there's also a transition transition idlers over here. So let me try it in a zoom in view. Now let's say this is our trough idlers. Will be our belt okay. and then back or wrap around to this pool. Okay, so um, there are idlers also provided in here, and that's called transition idlers. Okay, so back again to this trough, uh, trough idlers. If we draw it in front view, we'll just do something like this. Then this will be our trough angle, which can be from, uh, I think, 
that's 20 degrees then we also have 25 degrees 30 35 uh, 42 45 okay so that depends upon the flowability of the material basically if we have a free flowing grains if you have a free flowing grains like the mung beans basically you have a lower angle of repose and hence uh, if you use a, um, a flat belt instead of a trough belt then there's going to be a tendency that this material will spill out on the side okay so that's why it's better to uh, to provide them or to, to design the belt in a trough configuration but for sluggish materials then of course you can do a lower end Okay, so later we will discuss this. What else? Okay, so since this pulley is actually rotating, then of course there's going to be some, some power source. Okay, so power source could be connected to a let's say production gear. or chain combinations okay, so let's draw an electric motor okay, so it's something like that and of course I have to provide a frame okay what else there's also a scraper here Plow, scraper, and also we have a shoot here. This is referred as shoot, basically something like a hopper. And lastly, we'll also need since this is a belt components then we have to provide some take up units okay so let's try it here take up units so just to adjust the tension okay, so apply force for example By the way, regarding the idlers, there's um, there's also a a classification from SEMA regarding this pipes. So, for for example, there's SEMA B uh, or SEMA C, D or E or F. Okay, you just have to refer that in their uh, handbook. Okay, so SEMA, by the way, is it's the acronym for conveyors um, equipment manufacturing association okay, so there um, there are a group of um, manufacturers that that establishes the standards uh, regarding to to conveyor equipment so not just the belt conveyors but also I think bucket elevators and screw conveyors uh, except that in our course we uh, we we didn't use the handbooks uh, I mean their handbooks uh, in the design of bucket elevators and screw conveyors actually in the screw conveyor we adopted um, the um, manufacturer's catalog but for this one for the belt conveyor since uh, we have um, 
we have access then um, I guess it's also a good one to try uh, the methods based on their on their standards or handbooks all right now let's move on to our next topic which is the material properties for material properties uh, since this course is about AB material properties except that we're we're discussing this in the context of design in, uh, in the application so we still have to uh, to refer back to the properties okay so uh, recall that if we have a hopper or a bean hopper bean and let's say we have it closed at this bottom portion and then we fill this up with uh, material let's say uh, any grains and we have a flat surface if you open the bottom portion what you see is that there's going to be a flow of the material and we already discussed this that this angle uh, that the material makes the horizontal is what we call the angle of the pose. Now, in bell conveyor designs, there's another uh, another friction property that uh, we will discuss or that we will encounter, and that's the angle of surcharge. Okay, so. So the difference between this angle of repose and the angle of surges is that you have this you know, in a static configuration or in a, uh, static loadings. Okay. Uh, but if we do some agitation on this on this material, what we'll see is there's going to be a reduction in there's going to be a reduction in the uh, in the angle. Because the material will be compacted more. So this is the angle of surcharge. Hey, okay, let me draw it here again. If this is our angle of repose, and this is our, let's say, flat surface, but if this flat surface is, uh, let's say, it's vibrating and somehow it causes compaction to the material then of course the angle becomes becomes less okay so this one is the angle of repose but this one is the angle of surcharge and it's uh, it's usually 15 5 to 15 degrees lower than the angle of the pose. Now the question is, uh, why does this take place in, in, in the belt conveyor design? It's because if we have these belts and we have these idlers, then of course uh, this idler is going to be some gonna induce bumps on the materials and plus the equipment is, is also vibrating so in that way there's going to be some uh, something like a compaction action in the material and that's why the angle is reduced now to uh, to draw in detail if you check the the SEMA handbook and also other manufacturers have instead of, of having this perfect triangle shape the actual behavior of the material would tend to be something like uh, like this one something like a curve curved circle or just a, an arc arc segment okay so instead of this 
it's actually like this. And this will be our um, our angle of surcharge, or we can say surcharge surcharge angle. Now, if you go to the handbook. There's a table there, table 3-1, regarding the flow ability, uh, angle of surcharge, and angle of repose. So, uh, that's in chapter 3. And you see here that for a free flowing material, we have um, an angle of repose of uh, 0 to 19 degrees. And the angle of surcharge would be this one. Okay, 5, five degrees. And if we have um, free flowing material, this one is very free flowing. This, uh, this one is free flowing. Then this is our angle of repose. Then this will be our angle of surcharge. And for sluggish material, we have 40 degrees and up angle of repose. And we have this angle of surcharge. Now, you can also read the description here. It says for 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 very free flowing material we have a uniform size very small rounded particles either very wet or very dry um, such as silica sand cement wet concrete okay so you can just read this um, later there's also a material class description and there's table for the materials where it um, it tabulates the density the angle of repose uh, the recommended maximum inclination and also material code so you, this is not actually new to you because we already discussed this in our topic uh, about the screw conveyors about the material codes for example we have a we have a material that's, uh, that has C by N W. From that code, uh, you can actually know the size of the material. You can also know the flowability, um, the abrasiveness, and other properties. Uh, except that in this SEMA handbook, we have a um, different notations. Okay, so for this one, the letter, the first letter, it is um, it uh, I mean it corresponds to the size of the material. The second digit, that uh, number two here, that's the flowability flowability which also um, corresponds to the angle of repose and this one is the um, abrasiveness and this one or these two right here they're both um, miscellaneous characteristics we use characteristics things okay so again if we have a code like this then it means that there must be a table about the meaning of the of the code okay so if you can go to table 3-2 and we can see there that for example uh, the first the first letter uh, it it refers to the size so if we have a C C code it means the material is granular and under one half inch. Now we call that in our topic in screw conveyor, we have C one half, something like this, right? Now for this it's just a, a different notation, but essentially I think it's just essentially the same. Okay, so if you have A, so meaning it's a uh, very fine, and then if it's B, it's fine. Lumpy if it's T, and the second digit refers to the um, 
more dirty. The echo of those maybe says uh, we have two then meaning that we have a free flowing material and the echo of the post is around 20 degrees to 29 degrees. Okay, so from that you can also uh, refer to table 3-1 and you can find out the um, the angle of surcharge okay what else uh, the abrasiveness so for the abrasiveness we have a five then that's non abrasive and if we have a seven that's very abrasive and for number eight that's just very sharp okay and then for the miscellaneous characteristics if it says it's n then it means it contains explosive dust okay Ooh. so it is um, explosive um, what else the w it has oils or a chemical present that may affect the rubber products the belt products Okay, so from this code, you can actually obtain a lot of information. Alright, now let's move on to the design calculations. The first one is the capacity. The capacity, the I mean the theoretical capacity of a belt conveyor may be computed by this equation. C sub M is equal to A times V times the rho. Okay, so this one is the mass capacity that's in pounds or let's just write in metric for now. Kilograms per hour per unit time. And then this one is the area, the sectional area sectional area and this one is the belt speed and this one is the density material density okay so uh, the area is in square meter and this one is meters per second this one would be what's this kilogram per meter cube okay so if you do the units units we get m squared times meters per second times kilogram per meter cube therefore we can have kilograms per second if you if you convert that to hours it's just gonna be per hour. Okay so the idea of this capacity is for example we have this trough built and we have this material right here okay, let's say this is our material and this is our cross-section um, when we say cross-sectional area it refers to this area okay so meaning that at this section What's going to be the the volumetric flow rate? So we have this cross-sectional area, and let's say we are considering only this section, and this one is moving, the belt is moving. Then how many area? Okay, area times meter. So that's actually uh, volume. How many volume is passing this section per unit time? So that's the capacity. And if we multiply this uh, this volume, I mean this volumetric flow rate, and the density, then we can obtain the mass capacity. Okay, so now um, I guess I'll just end it here, and we will continue our discussion in the next video.